Dr. Diane Pham, welcome to Vibrant Vienna. My name is Kevin White. I'm so glad you decided to uh, reach out and share your story. Um, you are uh, the owner, is the owner the right word for it? Owner? Yeah, um, <laughs> yeah I do. It, it is, yeah. it is. I don't think about it like that way, but sure. tr it is true. So. But the name, the name of your practice, I guess would be a better way to introduce it, is Capital Aesthetics. Yes, Capital and Aesthetics and Family Dentistry. Got it. And you're across the street from kind of the Pear Tree Cottage in Vienna Inn. You're above what is now Bear Branch Tavern. Yes. Yes. And so, That's the library in between Whole Foods. That's what we tell all our patients. Got our it. landmark is now we say Bear Branch because it's like a legit restaurant. You know, we're so happy they're there. But before it was like empty for a little while. So. Yeah. Just yeah. say we're on the bike trail. We're in between Whole Foods and the library, across from the town green. So that was our script for like a long time. So. Perfect. That works. What are some of the challenges that the businesses had to face um, during the pandemic? Um, there's a lot. Uh, not just my business, but I feel like you know a lot of businesses. Um, to be sensitive to everybody, but. Um, the dental industry as a whole, um, starting in mid-March, um, I believe the date was March 17th, that we were asked to um, close our doors, like not have non-emergency patients being seen. So we only saw emergency procedures in the practice from the middle of March through all of April. Um, the governor opened it up on May 1st to uh, not, you know, to regular patients, but for over a month, it was emergency basis only, meaning translated like you don't come in for cleanings. If you feel like you chipped a tooth, you're going to have to wait, you know, and for it may not be a big deal, but for someone who chips a front tooth, they're not really happy. You know? Yeah, that's something I have a chipped front tooth, actually, and it was yeah. not. It was painful. Yeah, I mean, if it's pain, then you know we have to treat it palliatively. But just you know, the the little inconveniences to patients, or if somebody, I had a patient who you know I've treated for many years, and she said, you know, I really want to get into you because I feel like there's something that's a little sensitive, and I want to get it before it becomes a cavity. And then I have to say, um, I can't see you right now. And she's like, Well, when can you see me? And I'm like, mm, I don't know. Me? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I can, you know but it's not under my control so I would say that that was a big challenge um we are now able to reopen my office is scheduled to open in two days well three uh starting Monday May 11th Good. so we're very um happy for that we can't wait to come back uh, but there's been a challenge of getting necessary PPEs and it's been a nationwide worldwide problem Dentists are, you know, included in all of that. So we're no exception. So we have a very difficult time finding the appropriate PPEs to safely open the practice. Right. So, and that's so, why I postponed it. So, so you postponed the date that you I opened? Did. Okay. I did. Okay. And many of my colleagues, from what I understand, I just spoke to my dental lab this morning. But yeah, I mean, I could have come back on May 1st. We chose to come back on May 11th. Wow. Okay. I just want to make sure that we have everything so that everyone can be safe. And, yes. and it wasn't easy to get because everything is on back order. Things are back ordered still. Um, I'm borrowing things from like I'm my friends are lending me things so that we can get started we're swapping <laughs> it's yeah it's it, it's an effort yeah so what are some of the expectations patients should have when they come into your practice in terms of it being a little bit different now versus sure a pandemic situation <laughs> Yeah, so the difference is when you come in before, you know, we and and I think a lot of people like we do a lot to make the reception area look comfortable and cozy. Like there's a beverage stand, you know, I have water out, we have 
um, just books for children. I love seeing children. We have like a little area of books for children. We have a children's basket where they can reach in and they can grab their toys. And, you know, I made sure I stocked them with like cool toys and um, we have magazines. All that is gone. Like, so that, because we don't want patients cross-contaminating, um, so all that is gone. So we have no magazines, <laughs> no beverage station, where my coffee maker and, you know, everything was, is now where you Purell your hands. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And well, so it, it's changed in that way for now, just for now. I want to share, is that photograph on your website, that's the waiting area? That is my reception area. The yeah. reception area. I, I gotta share this because it's a beautiful website. <laughs> oh, thank you. But thank it's you. also um it gives an idea of uh capital aesthetic family dentistry of kind of what you're talking about and just in terms of um you know you might have a magazine on the table that people can grab while they sit and wait. Yeah, so absolutely. Can you and still- some... Go ahead, I'm sorry. Well, I was gonna say, can patients still sit and wait in the waiting area? No, patients are checking in in the car, so they're right. completely bypassing that. Um, once they come into, once they arrive for their appointment, that's when they call our office and then they speak to Paula my uh, front desk uh, girl, and she greets them, goes over some uh, basic questions, pre-screening questions, and then patients come in. We ask that everybody enters the office th with a mask. And before, you know, we, we know all our patients, we take pride in a very, you know, cozy type of community type of practice. And now everyone's coming in in mask, and we ask that they Purell their hands. We just it's it's a lot more sterile that's what we ask and that's the beverage station that i was referring to so you see the water and the coffee so that has now become more of a sanitation area and patients actually like it like i've seen emergency patients they come in and they like happily perel themselves <laughs> and yeah. you know if someone doesn't have a mask that's where we'll give them the mask and uh, you know just things like that and then they're instead of sitting in the reception area where I used to love it. And I would be so tickled to see that patients would sit there and know each other. Right. Or they would like talk to one another and like have a full on conversation because it's a small practice. I mean, it's a, it's a, we, we try to really make it personal and have like a close knit type of feeling. And we really do know like our patients. And so the patients would sit there and talk to each other. And that used to really tickle me. Well, now no one's going to sit there, you know, right. you come right in from the car and they're escorted right to the back because we have to be sensitive to sort of the social distancing and we understand that everyone's going to be scared. So, yeah. you know, Mrs. Smith may not want to sit next to, you right. know, another gentleman who might be coughing or so. For now, we just have to keep everything separate, but we look forward to going back to it and like filling the reception area. Yeah. So those yeah. are the changes. And as they come in, whereas before, um, I would be able to shake someone's hand, introduce myself, say, hey, how are you doing today? Ask about so-and-so. Now they come in, they get a preoperatory rinse. Right. <laughs> with, <laughs> right. <laughs> with a disinfectant, you know. <laughs> They right. walk in with a mask. I can't shake their hands anymore. I might bump an elbow. Sure. Um, you know, so it's just it's we're trying to keep everyone safe and yes. that's that's really what I have to kind of tell myself because I mean I will be entering the workplace for the first time come Monday. Right. So we'll be playing it by ear. So I'm kind of like describing it as I see it in my mind. Yes. Visualizing it. That's that's yeah. really good. That's really yeah. good. Um well, it's good to know, and I'm sure you're, any of your current patients that are hearing this, and hopefully potential patients um, hearing this would would feel that you you're 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 forward thinking, you're you're pre you're preparing, you are prepared, you even made the sacrifice of making sure. Let's push the date out. So that yeah. really gives 
me personally listening to this really great peace of mind yeah um, knowing that you that you you've been very thoughtful um and we're we're spacing our appointments out further yeah. so we're seeing less patients per day because we're allowing more time for um the breakdown process the sanitizing um we don't want a lot of, you know we don't we used to squeeze in emergency patients you know we'd accommodate people but now we still want to do that to serve everybody but we really have to be thoughtful about that because right. we don't want people kind of crossing you know i don't want like three people passing each other in the hallway and feeling really scared like that's yeah. terrible there's yeah. a lot of trust that you have to leave at the door in this day and age when you leave your house and then to come into a healthcare facility like you know it's, it's understandable. under normal circumstances i'm always a little like yeah you know. yeah like people are afraid of us to begin with right yeah. so. <laughs> sticking a metal object in my mouth that's really yeah. sharp yeah. The trust so now they're not only worried about pain <laughs> <laughs> yeah exactly when you were in high school who were you who is who is diane um senior year of high school I mean, I was a good student, you know, I tried to follow by the rules. Um, I went to a high school in Alexandria, so I didn't go very far. Um, pretty boring. Like I, you know, <laughs> not that interesting. <laughs> At that point, did you, did you know you, was dentistry even no, in your mind? No, not at okay. all, not what at all. At that point? I had no idea. I mean, honestly, like I went into um, my uh, freshman year in college as an undeclared major. Really? I had no idea. Yeah. Wow. I had no idea. Um, what What major did you declare once you declared? So uh, senior year, like all seniors, you know, back in like the 80s, like I would work at the mall right yeah. and and i worked for my parents company and well i worked at their offices and um i just wanted to figure out what i was going to do so that was always i always worked kind of like during the summers and during school breaks and so i i worked at the mall i quit my job at the mall um the summer before college and um i just really wanted to figure out what i wanted to do and i knew that i I knew that I wanted to go to college. I knew that I wanted a job that I would really love. I just didn't know what it was. It's really hard for an 18 year old to know what you're oh. gonna do for the rest of your life. Oh, right? absolutely, absolutely, yeah. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, so no, I, was, yeah I, I was an undeclared major, so. Not a, not a loaded question, but so what was your path into dentistry? So I, I um, as with most 18 year olds, before they go off to college, <laughs> they go get their wisdom teeth taken out, right? like the summer before. Yeah. So I, I still I, have. Them. Oh, okay. So, <laughs> so I had my wisdom teeth taken out, and uh, the dentist uh, at the time it was a family dentist, and he had known me since I was six years old, and you know he had seen me through my childhood up to my adulthood, and he was taking out my wisdom teeth, and he said, by the way, my um, evening assistant is leaving um would you like to come work for me and so i was like no that's disgusting you know <laughs> why would i want to do that i just quit my job at the mall you know and like he was asking you to be a high a hygienist not work the clerical side but actually work the hygiene side um, so hygienists have to actually get licensed. So he was asking me to um, be like his assistant. Like I would, I do some clerical work because I mean, I would be the evening girl, you know, sort of like the one who kind of floats in, you know, like <laughs> to help everybody else. So, right, when everybody so else like, is running out of steam. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I was like the floater kind of person. Got and you know, I would pick up the phone, I would sterilize instruments, I'd wash the instruments, I'd suction and, but it took me a while to get there because I remember sitting at the dinner table with my dad and saying, well, what do you think I should do? You know, and and 
I said, should I do this? And should I do that? And like, as most parents, it's dinner conversation. And they're like, no, yes, no. And you know, we'd have a discussion over it. Yeah. And I remember saying, what do you think of me being a dentist? And my dad was like, why would you want to look at people's mouths for the rest of your life? And so <laughs> I thought, that's a good point. You know? And I don't remember the conversation going much further than that. <laughs> I don't know what? what transpired, but then I got the, I decided to accept the job mm -hmm. and um, I actually really liked it. Like yeah. I, I felt like the days passed very quickly, like the timing and honestly for an 18 year old to work like eight hours, it's a long time, you know, for an 18 year old, like Absolutely. your, your mind's not really there. Like you'd rather be doing other things. And so I really enjoyed it. Like I, I was intrigued. Um, I found the environment to really feel like a good fit for me. Um, yeah. I was intrigued with what the dentist was doing. Um, and I really, um, it just felt right. It, you know, like there's just certain things that just kind of feel right. And it, I, I really felt like this is what I want to do. Yeah. So yeah. I declared my major. You declared your major, which with the first semester. Okay, so yeah. an undergrad. What is that? Biology. 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 Yeah. Got it. So I I chose my path, and that was sort of. And you never know if you're going to get into a graduate program, you know. So I mean, I didn't want to be a biologist. I mean, kudos to those who can. I think it's fascinating. But my dream at that time was to be a dentist. Yeah. So when I declared my major, I said, okay, now I really want to go to dental school. So yeah. what do I do to get there? You know, so I kind of, that was sort of my, that was like my vision. That was my pie in the sky. And yeah. I worked towards it. So, you know, I went through college and I tried to um, stick with the same job for like the four years and stayed assisting him. And, and so um, I got into dental school from there. And that's so that's, that. yeah. I love that story. I think it's really inspiring because um, I, I don't know if anybody who's under the age of 23 is going to be listening to this, but yeah. if you are, <laughs> <laughs> right, and 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 you're and you're stuck in that moment, that's why I really love having this conversation because, um, you know, so much of the stuff that's out there and the content that out that's out there, aside from the get rich quick and all of that stuff. And the interviews are with people who have great advice, but a lot of them is like, you know, they're these people, they're extra, I mean, truly extraordinary people, athletes and, yeah, you know, um, and maybe they had a circumstance that was a catalyst that was a really dramatic circumstance. Or maybe if not, they're, they've just got this drive that is incomparable. Yeah. But, um, that's what makes, um, you know, just having normal conversations with business owners in town, which I think in and of itself is an extraordinary thing, by the way, because um, that takes a, a tremendous amount of, it's, it's a risky proposition um, yeah. in spite of being a professional, right? It's still, there's all these other aspects to it, the operational side that, have to be maintained that you have to know a little bit about mm -hmm. um, in order to make it succeed so um um i would i encourage you know um, i think your story has a lot of value for young people in particular who um you know are carving their path and um, are are trying to look to people like you and other people in the community who are really leaders um, who can kind of say, look, here's how I did it. Mm -hmm. And I think the key thing that stands out in, in your story is um, that you, it, you were pulled in a direction and you just followed it. Yeah. It wasn't you trying to force something yeah uh, and it and it had nothing to do with chasing money or you know um this grandiose plan it was oh 
is the discovery journey. Absolutely, absolutely. And I feel that you really, I, I feel that it, it needs to be that way because it's more fulfilling that way. Like I can't imagine just chasing after, you know, like you said, the money. I mean, it's, there's so much in the profession that's not money. I mean, there's a lot of blood, sweat and tears. I mean, it's, it's, it's a challenging profession because for a lot of reasons. And like you mentioned the business owner part, I mean, you know, I, I went to school to quote unquote fix teeth, you know, as my patients would say, I know nothing about the business aspect of it. Right. So it's learned. And, and until I had the practice and I only took over the practice five years ago, um, though I've been a dentist for um, 15 until then it, it was really for me about helping others, building their smile, just these long-term relationships with patients that I wanted to create and like to, to be honored enough to be a part of their lives and to see them, to see their, their parents, their children. So, I mean, that to me was incredibly rewarding and um, it, it really felt like not a job, but really just a commitment to the profession. Yeah. So. I love the phrase building their smile. <laughs> <laughs> that's right but and so i have to confess prior to us meeting i went back to your website because it really is a good website Thank um you. and i and i looked at it again and um somebody else looked at it with me and said oh cosmetic dentist personalized cosmetic and family dental and that word didn't even occur to me like Oh, cosmetic. So when you said building a smile, that keyed yeah. that phrase. So what does personalized cosmetic dentistry, what is the cosmetic piece? What does that mean? I mean, it's a good question. So a lot of times, um, and, and I say this as a very umbrella statement, I don't mean it, you know, exclusively, but a lot of times cosmetic practices they're known for, um, let's just take the cliche, okay? Like the Hollywood smile, the veneers, you know, the 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 smiles of people in LA, you know, right. New York, Miami, you know, that type of where they're bright white wrapped from, you know, end to end in restoration. So there is, that is the cosmetic part that most people know about. Right. There's so much between that and family dentistry yeah. so a lot of times um someone who has a family dental practice or the vision of a family dental practice may not coincide with cosmetics you can actually marry the two of them and in fact i love both so mm -hmm. therefore when i was trying to come up with a company name it's a mouthful, but like capital aesthetics and family dentistry, it was very intentionally put together, even though it's so long, because I really do love the artistry of creating the smiles. And it could be, so, it doesn't have to be so big. It could just be something as simple as someone coming in and saying, I really don't like my smile. I, I have patients who come in and say, like, I'll tell them to smile for me so that we can do like a pre-op photo. And they say, I, I don't smile. Mm. or my spouse has never seen me smile and then we'll do some modifications the treatment can be relatively simple and when we do the post-op smile you can just see their eyes light up their smiles light up and yeah we've helped them as a person um through building the smile it's just so much that goes with it including the confidence and so just to be able to play a part in that in someone's life for me is so rewarding yeah. and then there's the other end where the family dentistry and if you know me as a dentist for the 20 years like i have seen children grow up because that's the span of a child's life right they're born i could be their first dentist and then they're off to college so i could have been the dentist that they knew growing up so you get a chance to shape that child you meet the parents, you meet the grandparents. And so that aspect of family dentistry is really rewarding and very enriching, especially yeah. 
and a community and in a community like Vienna. And I worked in Alexandria and I got to know Alexandria very well. And actually I worked in Alexandria for a good number of years. Um, so I got to know the community well, but it's just really getting to know like the people in the community and, and the family aspect of it, but yet the cosmetics. So it's a long name, but that's what the cosmetic means, you know, and I, I, I love both aspects of it, but building the smile and just seeing the children and um, just, it's, it's great. I think that concept of finding your passion and finding something, your life's work, mm -hmm. it's lost on a lot of people. It is. It there is. are not a lot of people that wake up in the morning and, you know, not every day, but, you know, in general are looking forward to, to like you said, the day goes by fast because you're enjoying what you do. Yeah, absolutely. It's hard to find your passion. I mean, I, and I think that it is a life's work to really find what works for you as a career. I mean, as a human being, you know, as a, as a mom, you know, yeah, yeah. As a parent. so yeah. it's, you know, just, you, you just always learn. And so, you know, I try to continually learn. I do a lot of continuing education classes. Right. Um, and there's just so much available out there that even in one sector that you do, you can definitely delve a little bit deeper into it. And I feel very fortunate that I, I mean, I consider it falling into dentistry. I didn't seek it out. And right. I just was lucky enough to um, be offered the job, the opportunity, and then it happened to be a good fit. And I had a lot of support like around me that enabled me to kind of go down that path. And, you know, luck never hurts also. But I, I have very supportive parents, um, have a supportive family. So it was, you know, it was just, it was good. Well, thank you so much for, um, for talking and sharing with us and um, sharing your story, sharing a little bit about your business and sharing about what you guys are doing to keep help keep us healthy and safe and all the precautionary measures that you're taking. Um, I applaud you and your your diligence to 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 do that um, to really make sure that you're you're you know doing the right thing really. Um, and best best of luck. Thank you, Kevin. Thank you. Yeah.